Chapter 2, Acting in the Hippodrome Now that Theodora's mother was the barekeeper, Theodora and her sister helped entertain the crowds too. They turned somersaults and acted out skits between chariot races. One day, Theodora decided to try something new to make the crowd laugh. She and her sister would pretend to be animals. When their mother called them out into the hippodrome, Theodora and Komita got down on all fours and crawled out into the arena. The crowd had just seen the performing bears, so Theodora hung her head down and let it dangle loosely from her shoulders, just the way the bears did. A few laughs came from the crowd as they realized that Theodora and Kamita were pretending to be the next bear act. Then Theodora and Kamita stood up on their hind legs, raising their paws in the, in the air. The bears roared. Theodora's mother scowled at the two girls. She turned around and gave the bears a command to roar. Theodora furrowed her brows and roared back. The crowd laughed. They were enjoying this different kind of bear act. After this, Theodora and Kamita came up with other ideas for entertaining the crowds. Theodora learned to mimic other animals. She became particularly good at mimicking ducks and geese. She found she could crane her neck in the same gawky way that a small bird could. Pretending to be an animal was hard work. Theodora had to learn all kinds of tricks like walking on her hands. To do her job, she became better and better at gymnastics. But Theodora knew that she could not go on acting forever. She was getting older, and most people did not think actors were respectable. No one would invite an actor to dinner. There was even a law that said actors could not marry government officials. An actor could only marry another actor. And that is exactly what Kamita did. Kamita fell in love with a young man who also acted in the Hippodrome and married him. But Theodora wanted to marry any man she fell in love with. And she didn't want to spend the rest of her life being despised by others. She had already fallen in love with a government official named Hesibolus. She hoped that he would marry her, even though she knew that it was very unlikely. Then Hesibolus got a job in the city of Apollina. It was far away from Constantinople. Perhaps, if she went with him to Apollina, no one would know that she had been an actor. Maybe he would feel free to marry her. Chapter 3. Sailing South Theodora sailed away from Constantinople, the city she had lived in her whole life, and moved to Apollina, south across the Mediterranean Sea. She was glad to be in a city where no one knew of her career as an actor. The governor, Hesibolus, seemed to love Theodora, and he was glad to have her in his city. He soon learned that Theodora was not only beautiful, but intelligent. She knew what the people of the city needed. She spoke her opinions boldly, even to him, the governor. He often asked her advice on how to rule his people. Theodora stayed in Apollina for four years. Asabolus enjoyed her company and listened to her advice, but Theodora knew he was still embarrassed by her past. She realized that Hesibolus would never marry her, so Theodora decided to leave Apollina and look for work in Alexandria, a city almost as great as Constantinople. When she arrived in Alexandria, the local church gave her food and a place to stay. The leader of the church was a wise man named Timothy. Timothy had made a rule that said that anyone who took help from the Christian church would have to go to class twice a day to learn about the beliefs of the church. Theodora went to class faithfully. Soon, Theodora became a Christian. Theodora made so many friends in Alexandria that she stayed much longer than she planned. She came to love Timothy like a father but she still missed her mother and her sister back in Constantinople. When she finally decided that it was time to go home, Timothy gave her enough money to return to Constantinople.